dead. What the heck? This has been Owl's flavor and yep. almost exclusively Owl's fl flavor because no other goal lane has been finding success with the Bruno thus far. Does require a very specific style of play that I'm not too sure we've seen from Lolil just yet, but would enable them to fight early on with some damage without needing to rely on Ling. Man, Chico, you you are a dirty <laughs> red side drafter here. This Khalid could be flexed into the roam position yep. if necessary, yep. and can be thrown into the EXP. We yep. see the full composition is Claude and as well as Kufra. At least they have the Kufra to try and slow down the early game. Yeah. MPL ID did show the Khalid roam. I was it by BTR. It's one of the. Uh, I think so. Big, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I was about to say big. It's actually by Geek Fam. Like it's Geek Fam. Yeah, once again. Oh right, yeah. Of course, right. it's Beloy, right? You know. Yeah. <laughs> but also one thing that we. We haven't seen much from Bruno, thanks to the patches that he has a winning matchup against a lot of the meta heroes right now, right? We got, it gets one Hass Claw and suddenly he's doing tons of damage. You want to fight early, Bruno can always be there if you need him. And the fact that JP9 still has a flex is in of itself a big advantage on that red side. So they take the Minotaur, go back to a full team fight, combat the and sustain that they have right now. Yeah, I like the composition. I, I like I like JP's composition. It, they planned it right from the very beginning. They got every all the picks that they've wanted. This is a really nasty team fight composition that has a lot of early potential. Yeah, straight up team fight. You got Minwin Fury, you got Real World Manipulation, you got Raging Sandstorm, and then you got Bruno to take the early game and scale alongside the Ling. So it's very, very complete from their side. I think Team Hack's draft is not too bad but it requires a little bit more conditions to be met, especially with the Alpha. They need to start fighting early, which Niners are already prepared for. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of mid lane control fights here between the mid trios of both sides. If they don't have control over the mid lane, this game is going to snowball out of control for JP. And I think that Team Hawk needs to answer that question as soon as possible because they only start scaling from mid game onwards. And I do like JP Niners. I mean, they have a team comp that if the Ling needs time to farm, you got Bruno, right? You got Kali. So let's jump in the game. One as we load onto the death land of Dawn. We got Team Hawk on the blue side, JP Niners on the red side. Just once again, a reminder to everyone watching about the stakes here. Team Hack desperately need not just victories for the rest of the season, but for their peers in the bottom of the rankings to do bad. So if they don't come out on top here, their chances of moving on to the next season will be looking bleak. It's one of the very few situations where you see professional teams hoping for the downfall of another, even if they're countrymen. Yeah, well, at least I like the early maneuver. We talk about the mid lane trio, right? How much you can control this lane and kind of dictate, the, dictate the pacing. Both mid lane is taking a beating, but the fact that you have Rasi around as the Minotaur does make life slightly bearable for Zach QT, regardless of whether Miko is around. Yep. Speaking of which, we look at the emblems, we see that Claude's still taking common emblems, but understandably so, right? Has tenacity, has swiftness, understands that it's not exactly the easiest matchup against Loliels in the early game, but most importantly, even though he doesn't have a uh, mana to consume, quote-unquote, he still needs to get the health from killing these minions. Find a control on to Max. He's going to be fine here. Did unlock the Tempest of Blade with that camp steal. So JP9 is ready. In terms of pacing, they're off to a decent start. I do wonder where that turtle is going to spawn at the two-minute mark because the pathing for both junglers right now, they're going to converse in the mid lane. Yeah, I think at this point, Team Hawk, they just want to crush down on Loliels, right? If they do decide, hey, uh, Turtle is up, do we do it? No, don't take it. Or this early on in the, in, in the game, is it worth it? So mid side gank again. This time, they will not be able to save Zaku. T first blood going over the box. Very important pick up here for Team Hawk. Their mid lane trio actually going to be a lot stronger than Niners in the first couple of minutes, since that is going to be a Minotaur Eve in the mid lane. So getting a kill onto Box straight away going to help out quite a lot to keep them in the early the mid-game scale. Well, with that early pick as well, this turtle falls into the hands of Team Hawk with no issues whatsoever. Niners don't really care whether they have the turtle or not. Not that big of a deal, but they need to make sure that Zach QT hits level 4, and that's when they can start fighting. Very unfortunate that Rossi even used his flicker to try and save Zach QT, so mm -hmm. that would be 80 seconds before a potential Minimum Fury ult would be available. But we are seeing the effects of this Bruno, right? Basically outlining Panda at the early game. And if Team Hawk doesn't provide support, Panda will just have to take that beating. Yeah, no surprises here. Loliel's slight, uh, slightly down in terms of gold, mainly because he is just trying to trade as hard as he can against Panda before it's too late, before that Trinity build is complete. 
Majority of the members of Niners going to be off towards the top side of this map. I think at this point, they need to be careful with the positions, the atypical positions you see from Kufra, right? That river line is particularly dangerous. Pixel brushes is dangerous. Uh, side bushes in the mid lane are also extremely dangerous. But the most important points are the choke points. The closest to the mid lanes transitioning into the pits of each, right? From red side, uh, from red side at the very least, they have to worry about that orange buff brush closest towards the river and also try brush where you see max standing right now the difficult thing for the knight is in this case though is that minotaur nowadays is really not that good at opening up the map anymore he's actually one of the squishier early game tanks so a lot of that pressure is going to go onto yeah tree to actually go into bushes and check where miko is which means that a greater exp lane presence will be required that might potentially put niners behind in exp speaking of exp presence right they've noticed the positions of where rossi is they could potentially invade for purple but it looks like they might set up a dive there's a huge chance either a dive or an ambush turtle is spawning in the next 15 seconds i think jp niners are well aware of that so yeah three you got to communicate that info team hawk they will relocate take that mid lane out first force jp niners to be reactive vexana will make it very easy so they get control of the turtle pit and it looks like they are just going to be willing to maybe give this up over to Team Hawk as well. Niners are willing to play for more late game, but right now, Turtle contested. Miko will find the slam ultimate, follow up from Yeji, yeah, counter engage, but Rossi just disappears. Turtle gets reset, and tempers a blaze from Max, he jumps around the swords, takes out Box in the process. So both teams trade one for one, but JP Niners now need to escort Yetri yeah, out. That would be a problem. Unfortunate for Rossi, he didn't react fast enough to the initial engage. Had he just popped that ult, he would have been able to make something happen. Not to mention that he had Flicker to reposition just in case Zach QT was looking for the most ideal box uh, RWM. But so far, it's been going very, very well for the side of Team Hawk. They've kind of managed to make it through the early game with that pick, first pick onto Zach QT, which allows them to transition a little easier. However, Max getting the kill onto Box in that turtle fight actually goes a long way for the Niners too because that slows down the turtle take and actually reduces the experience snowball that Team Hack could be grabbing. And as long as Niners can get into the late game, then Max can come online. Even as the ultimate backup, so if Team Hack wants to go round two, they still need to once again consider the fact that Rossi has a flicker middle and fury. Mark crowd control from Team Hack is a lot for Rossi to do with at this stage, and Miko's gonna do it again, this time flickering onto Rossi. Rossi will be able to get the ultimate off, Ooh. and that's a knockup on the three people on Team Hawk, which allows Max to come to the back, pop the Tempest of Play, dodge the Ever Sky Guard Avatar, and dash out with Rossi backing him up. But Rossi will fall, then just pop by Hesu. He's gonna survive and heal out with the passive, but at least Zach QT finds the trade. Team Hawk and JP Niners trade even. Great rotation coming in for Panda. He sacrifices tier one to ensure that they win this fight. They trade two for two. It sounds like a bad idea, but since Panda was able to pick up a kill as well as an assist, it still falls into the win conditions of Team Hawk. Uh, we have to worry a little bit. Panda on the Claude has been known to make a lot happen in the late game stage. But I think Niners are of the mindset right now where if they're able to prolong the game, they also feel that they're going to be able to scale better because Bruno and Ling will do quite a lot of DPS in the late game as compared to Team Hawk who are going to be relying a bit on this Alpha. Well, right now, this is the strongest Alpha is going to be in this game until second item, right? Yep. Now that he has that War Axe, he can basically sustain forever unless we see JP Niners commit hard. And even bring slowly out in as well. Max will jump in. They drop the Eternal Guard, but Max takes the Turtle away. Not a problem right there. It's JP Niners. They will find a disengage. Not for Yetri, though. Sacrificing his life to dive the back line. Team Hawk will get a kill, but JP Niners finds objective. All right, Rossi does finish off his flask at the Oasis. Gonna try and keep his backliners alive a little bit longer here. But so far, I'm not seeing a lot of map plays from the side of JP Niners to try and split up the members of Hawk. Rossi most likely will go down, yeah. So that one goes over the Panda again. JP Niners, they will get a bot tier one as a consolation prize. Kind of weird to try and jump back in there. Like. <laughs> He could have definitely jumped to escape. There's a chance that he would have still died anyway, but it would have bought more time. So maybe a bad decision, but still not too bad at all for the Niners since Lolil is getting structures. I mean, they did get tier ones on both sides of the map. So far, we're not seeing that happening for the side of Team Hawk. This is where we expect JP Niners to really start getting strong. And now that they've unlocked the lanes, the only problem is that mid tier one is denying them the access to easy solutions of rotating through the enemy jungle. You even saw Lolial rotating the bot side to take care of the wave. 
Team Hawk right now need to do some housekeeping, right? Top wave getting shoved in by Max, bot wave getting taken care of well by Low Liao. Can't really push mid thanks to Zach QT. Macro wise, I think JP9 is they definitely have that innate advantage with the draft. Yep, and then, yeah, finally they're utilizing Max, right? They want to split this map up as much as possible. Team Hawk need to take the initiative. It looks like they found him. They can control him, but can they keep him in place long enough? More than enough tools to do that killing spree for Panda. I'm literally what you were talking about, Gideon. They find these opportunities, pick off the Niners while they're splitting up the map, and Max going down there is a huge catch since he hasn't died yet this game. Yeah, but it did cost Dinesh his flicker. Oh, God. This one should be fine. Yep, has the ult, has Vengeance. Also opens up space for Panda. Mid Sayetri had to use the ult to get out as well. JP9 is now needing to wrestle back control a little bit. Their top tier one will fall as Lord spawns bottom side. Okay, okay. So now that they have Max back in healthy shape to try and contest, he doesn't have his purple buff. He will. Oh, yeah, three should be fine. He needs the housekeeping top side of the map, but it's tough, right? Because you know at this point that Gatot hasn't used the. Oh, wait, hold on! And the flickering gaze from Midgo. Hesu gets to the backline with the Vengeance. Zach UT trying to create the kill box, but Panda is on a mega kill streak. Yeah, three returns by taking out Hesu. So JP Niner is not really out of the fight just yet. It's an even 4v4. If Miko can find another engaged ditch, will be huge. This time again, finding Zakuti and Ye3. They both flicker away. Max gets the Lord. Ye3 re-engages to throw his life to get Panda. It's Loli out against Panda. Loli out wins out with the newly purchased wins of nature. JP Niners finds the itch. All right, all right. We're seeing some better stuff from Team Hack here. Miko being able to land quite a lot of good engagements, though perhaps that's due to Niners also not really having the tools to scout him out. Whoa, 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 Loliao. Are you, are you mad? Loliao's gonna mad fight this and die. Ah, bad habits. Rearing their ugly head again. But they just not going to take the mid-tier one. That was the whole purpose of this in the first place. So I think he definitely lost direction there. Probably still feeling himself after taking out Panda, uh, as well as making sure that he's just crushing everybody on the side of Team Hawk. He's, he's going to be the strongest at this point in time, but we do see the Trinity build, as well as the potential Winds of Nature in the process for Panda. He's already 5-0-3, oh, and, and I think that Panda knows for a fact that these team fights are a lot easier to manage now, as long as they take out Rossi. And I think right now, Rossi is the weakest link because of his uh, Flask of Oasis first purchase. He's not as tanky, but he does have a lot of sustainability. Doesn't help a lot when you're getting blasted down by a heavily fed Claude on top of the raw CC from Miko and Dinesh. Yeah. In fact, generally looking at the items, JP Niners are not equipped to actually deal with Panda's damage yet. There is just not enough physical defense to survive against him. And when you're up against a level 12, 503 Claude, that is going to be a problem. I would say the silver lining is net worth wise, both gold laners are equal, right? So Loli are going down, it stings a little bit, but they're not too far behind. I do wonder, I think Rasi is pre prepping himself for a winter crown. That could be the big difference maker to prevent any sort of one-shot from Team Hawk. So we see if Team Hawk can kind of pull away that space. Because I think Hesu alongside Miko have been doing a fantastic job, a lot more in sync. And Hesu cutting off the back line has really been limiting what Zach Uti and Loliao could do. Yeah, they're really struggling to find a position. Same goes for Zach Uti. He knows that he can't just drop down the RWM just for funsies, right? To try and zone his opponents. He's a stationary target. And now with the Winter Crown purchase, we can expect JP Niners to try and make something happen. Assuming they find that information first, because this is an informational war. Rossi, every time he tries to open up the map, has been punished, right? His three three out of the four deaths solely because he's opening up the map. Yeah, that is the issue with the Niners draft. Really, really good at team fighting, but because of the way that it's drafted, not that good at opening the map and requiring a little bit of split push play, which isn't the most synergistic with their good win condition. But we can see up here in the, in the top lane. We will get the tier two, thankfully. No engage angle onto Year 3, and Miko was eyeing him the entire time. Winds of Nature just got purchased by Panda. Big item for Team Hawk, especially in those team fights. The only reason that Panda wasn't able to stay long was because Loliao was just landing crits after crits. But with the one, it would make that difference. Loliao himself also getting that malefic roll. Mm, and that's going to be very useful here, especially to try and chunk out Hesu, Box, and even Miko, all of which is eventually going to have to buy some armor at some point of time. JP Niners, despite missing out on the checkmate, wait, okay. They're missing out on the checkmate angle, but I think they don't want to hold this Lord first. They want to give it over to Team Hawk to buy time for Max to split push. I agree. But Lolia has been helping them out, leasing it down to less than 50%. The I you can see the idea from Max, right? He doesn't want to be directly involved. He wants to come in late, waiting for his purple buff to 
speed back up as well, but JP Niners, they might have done most of the legwork for Team Hawk, so they will force the reset. Yeah, I think that is fine. This is exactly what the Niners want. They want to wait for that purple buff so that Max is able to fight at full potential once they decide to go for the contest. Jumping onto Hesu, he will use the Sky Guardian's avatar to get away. Panda will also disengage. Good move from JP Niners to force an important backline dive resource from Team Hawk. Now they will feel a lot more comfortable taking their Lord. As much as I want them to take this Lord, I think right now they need to figure out where Miko is. I think they're expecting them on the bottom right side of the map. Because Zach UT and the rest are just holding towards that mid lane, right? Just reset it, push out that mid lane, do it all over again. Yep. Just keep the cycle going. Very tense Lord Dance we're looking at right now. We're 13 minutes in the net worth lead in favor of Niners, but not by that much. Only about 2k. And with Panda already at max level at this point, they don't really care too much about that gold difference. Niners are just looking for an opportunity that they can set up by playing the map. And the fact that they lost that bot tier 1 when they were close to that area is a bit of a worrying sign. Loli Yao does not get jumped by Minko. Artem then gets dropped. Link not even in the vicinity, so Lord does go over to Team Hawk for free, but now JP Niners have the chance to make a difference. Panda getting jumped on by Max will be able to use the Winds of Nature to get away, but Yen will follow up. It's all about the re-engage. Max jumps back in, only to lose his life. Yen is the one that goes down. Max forced away. JP Niners a bit scattered in that decision making. Yeah, that was that was rough to watch, right? You could see that they were trying to decide between do we fight, do we take the Lord, do we fight, do we take the Lord? And even for me, looking at that fight, it's tough to say. You would lose a lot of your resources anyways, and I think Max definitely did not want to drop his ult that early on during the engagement. Yeah, it was smart by Team Hack to just blitz it down once they saw Max on the opposite side of the map. So because of that, Ling was not close enough to actually try and retreat it away for the Niners. I did actually like when Niners re-engaged with the delayed timing, but not everyone was on the same page, which allowed Panda to escape when a shutdown there would have been huge. Yeah, definitely would have been. When you look at the instant replay brought to you by JD, the, the idea was there from Max. He was able to zone out the rest of Team Hawk, but this is where you see how T JP Niners were just disjointed, right? Lolia was just pushing mid lane, the rest of them were trying to take out Panda. Didn't really go the way that they wanted. At least it's not really a big net positive for Team Hawk when it comes to the Lord take. So JP Niners are kind of still in the game. Yeah, a little bit of miscom there. I have no problem with Lolil split pushing the mid lane, but because that was happening, I feel like the rest of the team needed to not too hard commit. Their goal oh, yeah. was just to zone Team Hack back to base, not try to force a kill. It is fine for now, but the game is actually surprisingly even. And I also want to take a quick chance. Shout out to J Dinish. He's actually doing a lot better than we expected. Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, compared to his debut uh, on Ready Sports in week one, this is a way better showing. Has really been a crucial member in keeping that backline dive on JP Niners for Wade, right? Landing crucial yep. terrifies on Ye3, on Rasi, on Max. Especially Ye3, whose entire job, whose entire existence is just to flicker all the backline. But, I mean, Dinish has made it really hard. Uh, his spacing has been great. His synergy with Miko has been excellent as well. Always finding those follow-ups to get the Terrify in after the Tyrant's Revenge. So, doing pretty good right now. Niners still holding the gold lead, but most of that is on Max, actually. Lalil not quite keeping up with Banda's farm. This is what we have sort of hinted at during the pre-show when the going gets tough. Niners sometimes go into autopilot, right? Like Max will go off and do his own thing, and they try to play that split push. In this case, I do feel like it can still work, but you have to really be aware of where Miko and Panda are at. They are now, especially Panda, who has hit, hit his peak. Miko just got immortality. And JP Niners statistically have the longest floor dances, and that's how Team Hug even got to this point in the first place. Now that we are getting into the late game phase, 17 minutes in, another Lord spawning. Team fights are actually going to be pretty even overall, and the gold laners will play a much more heavy role, with Panda being the main source of DPS for Team Hawk. Now that box will start to fall off. In the same way, Max has to decide whether he wants to focus his efforts on split pushing or actually participating in the team fight where he could potentially be picked off. They don't really have a wave set up for Max, and that is going to be the pain point for JP Niners. The prep isn't really done for him. Panda is going to shove up the top wave, even set up a slow push. So Team Hawk now has the macro in their favor. Max has to get here in time, and he 
does have a bit of room to work with. Panda goes in with the Blazing Duet with Miko, but Max steals the Lord, and that could just be the turning point for JP9. The slowly out gets away, Hesu zones him out. Winter Crown being used by Zach QD, he survives as Rossi heals him up with a motivational roll at the very end. JP Niners makes the important plays, takes out Panda and Box and the Lord. That's the turnaround the Niners have been looking for. Team Ha committed maybe too many resources to catching out Lolil. And with the Purify and Wind of Nature still available, that actually put Panda out of position. And without him, Team Ha, they can't defend. This is a JP Niners' best chance to really do some big structural damage. They will not be able to end the game. So Team Hawk still has a fighting chance, for sure. But we're seeing JP9 is starting to pull it together a little bit. Just feels like a positioning war. Hesu is only trying to zone him off here, but yeah, three, he's just so tanky. He really is. With the lore on their side, it could get more than just one inhibitor. Max also just got his immortality. So at the end of the day, JP9 is starting to really extend that lead. But do they want to stay around? It seems like that is going to be the case. Panda being caught up by the RWM. The A3 goes down. That is Immortality. Big minimum fury. But the damage from Team Hawk is just overwhelming. They are just flooding JP Niners with so much numbers that it might not be possible for JP to end the game. Rossi will try his very best, but Team Hawk holds the front and defend their base to live another day. Ooh, some mistakes being made there. Niners are definitely overstayed their welcome. They have a lot of damage, but they're fighting inside the Team Hawk base where they can just keep walking back home, refreshing and rejoining the fight. And Niners just got caught out of it. They were stacking up and got caught inside the Avatar of the Guardian. And that caused a lot of AoE damage. It also helped that Miko was able to land a pretty good ult as well, right? Slowing down ZAKUT's RWM's DPS, catching Max against the wall too before he got the Tempest of Blades. I think right now it's just a positional war between JP and Team Ha. That allows Team Ha to at least tend to get one inhibitor, but ZAKUT will zone him out. See Max coming in from the back line. Maybe it will be an opportunity, but Miko sees him. So very good <laughs> Team Ha. <Hawk>. Really? <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta give it to him. Gotta, gotta give, it, give to it to him. him. Yeah, oh, right? I can catch like, Good job. You scouted the brush. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'll get you me. next time. <laughs> Comes up, <laughs> comes up, just pulls up on him casually. I think as of right now, right, both teams need to make sure that the carries aren't standing too close together. Lolio cannot stand next to Zach QT side by side. Same goes for Panda and as well as Dinesh. The moment that they do, you see both teams pull the trigger finger very, very fast, right? And I think Box is in a very unique position because him, he can displace his opponents, he can engage his opponents, but most importantly, he has the most amount of sustain. So going in and out of these fights are actually very possible if he times it according to the CC from Dinesh or maybe even Hesu. And yeah, there's a lot that Team Ha can actually play around, right? We're seeing a little bit more discipline now. The coordination's not bad. There is actually follow-up when Mika or Hesu engages, but sometimes it is still a little bit scattered. If they can clean that up, actually, they do more than enough damage to take down the Niners. Team Ha has plenty of crowd control, so JP Niners needs to keep that in mind. In fact, right now, they're gonna start to blitz down the Lord, or maybe make an attempt. Team Hawk, they didn't have Panda and Miko with them, but they're able to catch up. The mid wave needs to be taken care of, though, so JP Niners, they're not really rushing this. Mid wave has just spawned, so Panda doesn't need to worry about that mid wave that much. Why, why put it so low? Why put it in your territory, a... man? Oh. oh, no. I guess this is the only way. Oh, hold on. They found Miko, and Miko found Zach QT. They need to get him out. Zach QT trying to survive, but Panda's gonna get jumped on by Year 3. They dropped the Eternal Guard, which missed. Zach QT gets out, dropped oh. the RWM. Box has just overextended. He thought his team has a chance, but now he's gonna full, feel the full force of JP Niners. Even has to re-engage to try and make a difference, but can't even find Year 3. JP Niners just forces a mistake out of Team Hawk. Nicely done. I think that JP Niners honestly could have done a little bit more there. I think Max should have chased Panda. There's no point actually peeling back and trying to get rid of Miko. Maybe even Dinesh would have been an ideal target, but Dinesh went out of vision as soon as Max gave up his position of chasing Panda. Yeah, I absolutely think that should have been one fight for the Niners. They already baited out all of Miko's tools, and then Yetri almost took down Panda by himself. They could have totally dived them, but we're still a little bit wary about Hesu holding the front line. And JP Niners, they will get a free Lord for themselves. And this is probably where Control completely goes over the JP Niners side. Team Hunt gets a Consolation Prize, a bot tier 2 of JP Niners. Not too big of a deal, but we're reaching 
think the longest game so far this week has to offer. Yep. 22 Every and a half minutes. Everybody pretty much at max items. It's only the supports on their final... Sorry, the EXP laners who are looking to pick up their final item. Same goes for the supports. But with such a whopping lead for Max's side, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Nope. It feels like there's too much hesitation coming in from Team Hawk at certain points. They have made some good plays, the mo but the moment something doesn't work out, you can see that it takes them a moment to regroup. And Niners use that to just blitz down the Lord instantly. And is this endgame? Uh, this could be endgame here. I mean, this Lord should be pretty powerful and pretty difficult for even Claude to deal with. It comes down to Miko as well. He's in a very interesting position. Oh. Gets engaged to the back. That's going to be purified. Oh, oh he's actually caught out. We know fear from Rossi as a response. Hesu with the Vengeance, able to zone Lolia away. Dinesh takes out that QT. Team Hawk once more mounts a defense of their career to keep this base intact. Woo! Hesu doing a lot of work right there. Basically 1v4ing the entirety of the Niners and allowing the rest of Team Hawk to deal with the Lord. Uh, I mean, it was a good idea from JP Niners, but I think that Rossi definitely needed to be uh, a lot more forward in that angle. I mean, yes, he was going to hit the third. Uh, he was going to hit the Minoan Fury anyways, but I think he was just slightly forward. It brought to deter the front line of Team Hawk from actually engaging in. Wow. So far, I, I think that Yetri has been doing a phenomenal job at actually threatening Panda's position consistently throughout this match. I just feel like his his work goes a little unnoticed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you could say the same about Mikko, right? He's been getting some. Really nasty catches. Zach T, Lo Liao, crucial targets that you say shouldn't stand together, but they do anyways. Yeah, the frontliners have been doing a lot of work this game. Just threatening the gold ladies, making it so that neither Panda nor Lo Liao can very frequently get the position needed to do consistent DVS. So me and LaFell, we had this conversation yesterday, right? Like team victories have been coming down to the enemy team's making mistakes rather than the winning team making good plays. Are we looking at the same situation right now for these two teams? Yeah, we are looking at the same situation. However, I will say that at least JP Niners know how to force a mistake out of their opponent, utilizing their map advantage. The fact that they have three inhibitors still standing, Team Hawk is always going to have to be on the defensive. They always have to worry about a backdoor, and JP Niners really need to utilize this because half the time, they're so concerned about wiping out Team Hawk that honestly, simple, uh, basic stuff like minion wave management is sometimes forgotten. That's how they lost their tier 2 for free on the bottom side of the map. This has been a weakness of the Niners for a little bit. Their macro play is actually pretty good, but sometimes will get a bit narrow-minded in terms of getting those kills so that they can open up the map and actually end the game. We have reached a point now where anything can actually happen, even if Team Hunk still have a few structures to deal with. As long as Panda is able to survive a fight, the game can end right there. It's a tipping point. Max will be spotted out by Mikko again. There should be some info the team up can work with. They got a top wave set up. Max didn't deal with it. An attempt to push Hesu away. But team Hawk, they might find it engaged. They find Lulia again. He has to use his Purify for the second time. But Hesu follows up to the back with the Avatar to Garden and Box with the sweep as well. Sparrow of Alpha. Lulia needs to go. And Dennis lands the killing blow. JP Niners will get a trade in return. But they also call Rossi. Winter Crown to buy time. Oh He's going to have a And Max is going to go for the back door. JP Niners just needs to stop the recalls. Don't let them get back to base. But Mikko with the Conceal will give that extra speed. Is it enough though? They got killed away. Oh. Put the minion out of the street! He put the minion out of the game! Panda does go down, but Max has to retreat! Team Ox still keeps the game! in the court. Woo! All right, good response from Team Hawk, but it doesn't mean that the crystal is not at 20%. It's still anybody's game, but JP could shove this in. Oh my goodness, right now, Niner's gonna try and force it while Hesu and Panda are still down for the count. Turtle got dropped. And another oh, 30 so seconds, there's an RWM, Rossi jumps in, gonna prop that Mino and Fury, the Minion Wave is nice. in as well, the Gary of Dinner, the Eternal Guard will take out Rossi, there's still one more Minion Wave in the bottom lane, top side coming in, Zach QT, just pressing on the Crystal, they should have enough damage, just hit it. Max, he just needs to hit the just Crystal, hit it. just do it one more time, yeah, Trey will take over the job, and JP Niners just toughens it out for game one. Man, they forgot that minions and backdoor protection was a thing. They just let Miko, as well as Hesu, sit on top of that wave. They should not have bought that much time. But luckily, JP, they still knew with super minions, it's possible. We